We've talked a lot about theory of vacuum tube operation and electron flow and thermionic emission. And we've even gone as far as slicing some vacuum tubes apart to take a look at the inside. But one thing that I've always wanted to experiment with is trying to recreate thermionic emission using just stuff I can find in the garage. Now this is tough because thermionic emission only works because there's a vacuum, because the molecules in the air often interact with the electrons as they flow from uh, you know, the, the cathode to the anode or to the plate. And without having a vacuum, those electrons can't quite get to the plate, so we can't really see it. But I have some ideas for how we might see this. And I wanna go out to the garage and I wanna build something and maybe test it. So uh, let's head out to the garage and let's see if my idea can actually produce uh, anything that we can measure on the multimeter. Hopefully it can, I don't, I don't really know, uh, but it'll be fun to try at least. So let's head out there and get started. So here's my plan. We'll have uh, two posts sticking up with uh, wire strung between them, and then we'll have a solid steel plate behind it. And then we'll uh, take some fire and just uh, run fire on this wire between the two posts. And uh, hopefully that will warm up and knock electrons off and they'll be attracted to the steel plate. Now that should hopefully make a diode, you know, with this being the cathode and this becoming the plate, and the diodes rectify. So uh, I want to try and rectify some AC voltage here. So I have a transformer that's uh, fairly low voltage, and I think I'm going to use that because I'm brave, but I'm not brave enough to try this with a high voltage AC. So we'll have some low voltage AC coming into here. And so we'll run one end of the transformer into the plate, and then off of the wire that's going to have fire coming off of it will come off of that into a voltmeter. And then the other end of the transformer will also go to the voltmeter. And so hopefully if we see some electron flow from the wire to the plate, we should hopefully see some DC voltage on the voltmeter. So there's a lot of problems with this idea. First of all, there's most likely going to be a decent amount of space between our wire and the plate here, simply because I'm, I'm doing this uh, with just random junk I've found in the garage. Uh, but what that means is that there's going to be a decent amount of atmosphere between the wire and the plate. And so that means that any electrons that come flying off of the wire are going to interact with that atmosphere because, well, we're not in a vacuum. So that's going to, to cause a massive hindrance. The second problem is that Yes, I'm using low voltage AC because I'm scared, but the low voltage AC means that there's not a very strong potential on here to attract those electrons that flow this way. So we may not actually see anything on the voltmeter, or if we do see something, it may be very, very small. So, uh, well, but I mean, there's, there's really only one way to find out. This looks to be fairly easy to build, so let's head out to the...
I've got my really interesting looking diode set up here. The, uh, the coiled wire right along here still has a lot of salt in it, so I'm hoping that that will cause some uh, electrons to fling off. We, we don't know. I've never really tried this before. Uh, I've got a transformer here. It's only putting out a very small voltage. As a matter of fact, I've got my uh, voltmeter set up here. If we pop that into AC and we just hook that up there. Uh, yeah, you can see that's um, about 16 and a half volts. Uh, and so the way that it's hooked up is coming out of one side of the, the transformer here, we go into the plate. Uh, we'll go ahead and move this back over to here. And then coming out of, hopefully, our cathode here, we go into the positive uh, probe of the, the voltmeter here, and then the negative probe of the voltmeter is hooked up to the other wire of our transformer. Uh, it's very low voltage, so we probably won't see a whole lot of number right here. Uh, we'll put that in DC, and you can see we're, we're reading like 2 millivolts, essentially nothing at the moment, uh, because there's obviously no rectification going on. But hopefully when I put the fire onto this, uh, we should see this number go up. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll give that a shot. I've never tried this before, but if you're watching it, hopefully that meant that it worked. Alright, let's see if I can get everything in the shot here. That was interesting. Now I saw briefly a minus uh, one and a half volts on there, and I, I don't actually know why I'm reading minus. That doesn't really make any sense to me. Uh, but uh, we, we saw that it was rectifying something. We saw some, uh, some diode action there. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and give this another shot. I'm starting to melt my, uh, my alligator clips here. Let's uh, put some more salt on this. All right, let's give it another shot and see what happens here. Yeah, look at that, minus 300 millivolts there for a second. Minus 0.5. Minus 1.1 I saw briefly. Wild. Okay, so I don't I don't know why I'm getting minus voltage out of it, but we can see that something's happening. I mean, I read minus one and a half DC volts there for a second. That's insane. All right, well, I, I guess that means that we've, we've gen got some genuine thermionic emission going on. That's crazy. Okay, I've got a I've got a different torch here that I can uh, hopefully regulate the temperature a little better with. And uh, again, if we, we plug it in directly, you can see we've got 16 and a half volts of AC. This is not much. I'm not expecting a large amount of rectification, but I'm hoping to see something here. All right, so if we put it there and we go back to DC, there we go. We've got two millivolts. Let me get this thing lit. So I can bring the heat way down on this thing a lot better than that other torch. And so we'll try and get the, everything in frame here. All right. Look at that, minus five volts. Whoa, look at that, one and a half. I swear I saw two volts there for a second. All right.
right, now we've burned off all of the, uh, the salt again, but we definitely had something going on there. That's awesome. All right, let's put some more salt on it. Maybe we can, uh, maybe we can get some more out of it. This is awesome. This is exciting. All right, I got a little more salt on there and I've taken my multimeter and I've changed the uh, range function so it doesn't keep trying to auto range while we're moving all over the place with voltages here. Uh, so let's go ahead and get my flame going again. All right, let's see if we can get this. Okay, let's try. Yeah, look at that. Two and a half volts, two volts there pretty consistently. One point eight volts, one point two, one point three. I saw two volts there for a second. Oh, we're starting to burn the salt off. As the salt burns off, we definitely lose some of that. Oh, look at that, it's starting to glow bright red. Wow, that's so cool. So I had to think about it and the multimeter just wasn't cutting it. I, I just, I really, I, re I want to see what's going on. So I brought the oscilloscope out because why wouldn't you have your really expensive oscilloscope next to fire? Sure, nothing can go wrong, right? <laughs> so right now the transformer is hooked up to the plate through this white alligator clip right here. And the positive probe of the oscilloscope is also hooked up to the plate through this yellow alligator clip right here. And then the negative probe of the oscilloscope is hooked up to the other end of the transformer here. So because both of these are connected up to the plate, it's just, it's like they, the plate doesn't exist. It's just passing through. So we can just take a look at what the transformer is putting out exactly. And that's, that's what we see here on the oscilloscope. And right now this is set up to uh, 10 volts per division. Uh, so we can see that it's going about 24 volts uh, from peak to peak, which comes out to an RMS of 14 volts. Uh, so, well, we don't, we don't really want to see that. We want to see the diode effect. So we're going to put this right here on this one. And you can actually see that we still have a little bit of a waveform showing up if we bring the scale down. That's one volt per division. So you can actually see there's uh, some, some coupling going on through here, uh, which is kind of interesting because there's not an actual physical connection, but it's, we're, we're getting some AC through there. So hopefully when I put some heat on this, we should see uh, half of this go away. So we'll bring that right on down. And this is one volt per division. So there's one, two, three, four, five. So five volts on the top and on the bottom. Um, so hopefully we can see something going on. Uh, let's, let's give it a shot. All right. So let's get some heat onto there. Whoa, something's changing. All right, let's 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 change this. So that's two volts peak to peak. Boy, it sure is messy. All right. Well, that was not what I expected to see at all. So we're still we're still not connected, but because the heat's going there, the the AC coupling is ridiculous. We're we're at 20 volts peak to peak. It's almost like we're directly connected to the plate even though we're not. That is not what I was expecting to see. Uh, all right. So so we saw some really interesting things going on there. So what did we learn? <laughs> I, I I don't know if we learned anything really. Other than that, this show sure was fun to do. Uh, but we did see some really interesting things going on. When we had just the voltmeter, we saw 
positive voltage and negative voltage. And at a point, we actually saw like a consistent two volts. So there was something happening in there. Now, when we hooked the oscilloscope up, we saw something totally different, something that I wasn't expecting at all. When there was no heat applied, but everything was cool and we had uh, the probes hooked up, we saw a little bit of an AC coupling effect and we saw the, the peaks at about uh, three volts or so. But when we put heat on it, we saw those peaks grow and grow and grow off the scale, all the way up to about 20 volts, which is, which is crazy. That's almost like we were directly connected, even though there was very clearly an air gap between the two. So I, I still am trying to wrap my head around what's going on, what caused that to happen. And I think that my theory at least is that because of the design of how I built that thing, there wasn't a way for me to heat the cathode up without also heating up the plate. So I think the plate was getting hot and the cathode was getting hot and that was allowing thermionic emission to happen in both directions. So as things got hotter and hotter, we saw more electrons flow back and forth. And that was why we saw the sine wave grow like that all the way up to 20 volts. So I think that's what's happening, which I think is Awesome, that's really cool that it was, we can visually see thermionic emission, if indeed that's what was happening. So I, I'm, I'm not exactly qualified to say exactly what's happening because I'm, I, th there's a whole lot of material science stuff going on here that I, I just am not qualified to talk about. But I know that some of you guys watching this are way smarter than me. So if, if any of y'all have any insight as to what's going on and if you know that, that it's totally different than what I'm thinking, please let me know. I want to hear about it in the, in the comments below. That would be awesome to hear. But uh, either way, this was a huge amount of fun and I have some ideas rolling around in here about how to take what we learned today and expand it into maybe something a little more interesting, maybe something a little more effective. So I'm going to keep letting those ideas bounce around in here. I'm going to think on it. And uh, well, thank you guys for watching. And I guess we'll see you all in the next episode.